Hi everybody, Stu here. We're going to go ahead and show you how to configure FL Digi to interface with your uh, HF rig. So hold on to your hats. This gets a little fun. Hi all. Well, today I want to show you how to set up FL Digi for HF. First thing we want to do, of course, is we want to launch FL Digi. So, away we go. And we come up with our wizard screen. I'm sure you all remember this. Now, when I showed you how to do the analog ambient, I basically told you that uh, you don't need to fill this all out because you're really only going to be using it for UHF, VHF. Well, now you're going to want to use a lot of the macros and things like that that are built into FL Digi. So you're actually going to want to fill this out. Uh, I'm just going to put my call sign in here twice, my first name, and uh, my antenna. Well, that is a homebrew dipole. My QTH. Newberry Park, California, and I am in the USA, and of course I'm in DM04. All right, now my state is California. There we go, uh, and my county is Ventura. All right, I've got all the info in now that uh, I need for my identification. Now, interestingly enough, we need to set up our port audio, but this time we're doing it a little bit differently. We actually have a microphone that says 3 USB audio codec. And you know what? That is the microphone that I use um, for um, uh, the setup here. Uh, because this microphone and speaker are actually built in to my radio. I have an FT991 that I'm configuring this on and I have a single USB connection. Now, chances are if you're going to hook up with a signal link or something like that, you're going to have the same thing, a microphone and a speaker and it's going to be USB based, okay? So let's not take that as a surprise and you can probably use uh, pretty much the same settings, but remember, figure out what your actual um, sound device is that is interfacing directly with your radio, all right? And uh, for the most part, we can pretty much leave this all the same. Uh, the only time I ever usually have to go in and change something is if I'm having, a, having problems with the transmitting. Uh, now we get to rig control. So I'm going to use Hamlib. I happen to like Hamlib. It's built into FL Digi. And I have to click up here and tell it I want to use it. And now I am going to scroll down and I am going to find my Yesu FT991. Oop. There we go. And this happens to be on COM11. Now, it is set for 38400. That is how I have my radio set. Uh, I need to turn off flow control because I have flow control turned off on my radio for performance reasons. Take a look in your menu. Take a look in your manual. Okay, this is where we all kind of part ways because we're trying to figure out which one we have uh, and how we can figure. So I'm going to hit initialize, and I guess it liked it. All right. Next, I don't care about the tabular information, and there we go. All right. Guess what, guys? Here I am. And I'm going to adjust this out. This bottom half's a little bit big. So I want to adjust that down a little bit in size. Give me a second here. Where is that? Oh, yeah. There we go. I want to go to two times here. And it looks like I'm not getting any signal. But that may just be because I'm not set up correctly yet with my controls here. Let me adjust my uh, uh, deal down here and I'll crank this up a bit. Ah, there we go. We're starting to see some stuff here. All right. There we are. Now, uh, let's see. I want to, the higher I take this number. Yeah. Now, I am hooked to a dummy load. Okay. So, realistically, 
uh, and I don't really need this full screen, but I'm kind of doing it for your benefit. Um, realistically, the uh, with me hooked to a dummy load, this should probably just be like, oh, straight blue. So 20 and 80, 20 and 70 is a good place to start. Um, but it's going to depend completely on how you're configured and set up. All right. Now, let us go ahead and uh, I'll turn a little noise on here. And yes, I can hear it receiving. So now I'm going to test to see what my transmit level is. First off, I want to hit tune and see if I can hear it through the monitor on the uh, radio. All right. And it looks like I've got a signal coming out. So I'm going to hit tune again. Now, the thing about this is it isn't just setting your power. Okay. You also have to set your digital gain. Now, on a signal link, that's going to be a couple knobs that are on the signal link. You're going to have a transmit level and a receive level. And that's where you're going to adjust a lot of this stuff. Um, you're also going to have controls in Windows as well. Uh, and there are some base settings you may or may want not want to use. Okay. But for our little experiment here, uh, let's see. I'm on uh, PSK31. I'm going to go ahead and change my setting down here. I'll roll this on down to 7070, which is the proper frequency. I'm just a little high there. There we go. Let me lock that back down. And I'm going to show you on the radio exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, first off, let's start with uh, getting the radio up in the video here. Now, the radio control itself, um, I'm going to go ahead, you're not going to see, but I'm going to hit the tune button again. And what I want to look at is I want to look at my ACL or ALC or my auto level control. Uh, so let me make sure I'm on all the right things here. I'm going to hit tune. And that's way too high. So I'm going to turn down my DT gain. All right. I probably don't want it at zero. I probably want it, yeah, just off of zero. So, yeah, that's perfect. As long as I'm in the good area there, I'm good. I'm going to turn off tune. And let's go ahead and we can uh, get rid of this screen here. Give me one second. There we are, back to our main screen. Now here, remember all the, the information that we put in? Well, here we can go ahead and hit our... CQ, and we're actually now sending CQ out on the frequency. Now, I'm hooked to a dummy load. So what I'll do is I'll try to do a screen capture of PSK31 uh, later from my house because I'm in my office right now prepping my rig for field day that we're taking out to the Reagan Library. And hey, if you happen to hear us calling N6R, that's our special event call sign. So I'd love it if you came out and... Uh, uh, made, either came out to the Reagan and said hi, or better yet, if you're uh, on the air and you're running anything on HF or anything on VHF and UHF, if you hear one of our guys call in CQ from N6R, give them an answer. Uh, give them a QSO. Uh, it's really nice. We have some really nice QSL cards, um, and all you got to do is make a contact and make a request. Anyway, with that said, that is pretty much it to getting this set up. It's not all that complicated. And with this, now I can go into my op mode and I can also do RTTY. Just that easy. So a couple things you need to understand if you're going to do RTTY. Um, RTTY, basically when someone says I'm on this frequency, Let's say they say they're on uh, 7081, okay? So I've got to tune my radio, my radio, actually to uh, 7080. So let me spin the dial a little bit. And I'll try to lock that down. I got the dial set a little loose on this. I'll probably have to tighten it up for field day. All right, we'll lock that down. Now, I have to set my radio to 7080 and then adjust this bar so the right-hand 
line is right on the 1000. Now, how can I tell? I look up here at the actual frequency, and I can sit here with my mouse wheel and click it once and look at that. Now I'm on 7081. So the frequency that we're writing down and the frequency that we're using for uh, RIDI is actually what lines up with this top line right here, okay? Um, I can go into the details on why that is, but I encourage you go, to go to the RTTY site uh, or the FL Digi site and read all about that, all right? Uh, there's lots of other features for uh, FL Digi. It's a great program. I personally love it. Uh, I use it a lot. I use digital a lot. So uh, read all about it and have a great time with it. Anyway, with that, let's go ahead and confirm our quit here. And that's it. Um, hey, you know what? I've got some extra time. Maybe you guys might just want to see how to get uh, WSJT set up for, uh, uh, for FT8. That seems to be kind of popular nowadays, right? Uh, why don't we, why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's see. Give me a second to find it. And let's go ahead and launch it. Okay, and let me move it up to this window here, where I'm recording. All right, and let's stretch this out a little bit, and we can make this a little bigger too. What the heck? All right, so when you launch it, there's not a lot going on here, okay? We need to get everything kind of set up. So. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to go under file and we want to go into settings. Here we are again, my call, AG6, AG, and my grid is DM04. And there's some settings that I like. You don't have to do this. If you've never done it before, I think this will make it easier for you. Um, I like to put a blank line between decode periods so I can see what's actually going on. I, I'm here in the U.S. I'm used to dealing with miles, so I want to see distance in miles. Um, let's see. If I double-click on a call, I want it to set to transmit automatically. Uh, I want to disable transmit after I send a 73. And uh, let's see, I want to allow frequency changes while I'm transmitting. All right, let's go to the radio. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to identify our radio. And there's my, uh, there's my 991. All right. Again, I need to change some stuff, though. Uh, let's see, we're going to put this on COM11. And I'm at 3800 baud. 38400. I'm 8 data bits, 1 stop bit, and I have no handshake. And I want to use cat for my push to talk method. So let's test it. Hey, guess what? It saw my radio. So we're all set with that. Now let's do our audio. And look, it found the USB sound card. So I'm in I'm in great shape with that right now. I'm really happy about that. All right. Let's see. Uh, I don't need to worry about TX macros reporting. I want a prompt to log. Uh, let's see. Um, and that is probably all I want to set for now. Now, I interface with a couple different programs, one of which is my logging program, so I accept UDP requests. Of course, that's completely up to you as to whether you turn any of that on or want to interface with that stuff. Uh, if I ever need to change the frequencies, I can change the frequency ranges right there in the tables. If I want to change the colors and what they show up as, I can do that. But here's some kind of important stuff under here under advanced. If I am actually doing like a contest, here's where I can turn on for my contest. I can even say ARL field day and put my field day exchange in. Okay, we're not going to do that because we don't really need to. So we're going to click OK. 
All right. So it shows us at 7078. Well, 7078 is the default frequency for um, JT65 and I think JT9. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change our mode here under mode to FT8. And look what happens. Our frequency automatically changes. Is that cool or what? And up here we have our waterfall. Uh, let's make our waterfall a little bit more entertaining. Uh, I don't want an average. I'm going to go ahead and put the average down to 1. It's going to average every uh, everything that comes in. Uh, I also don't want cumulative. I want current. So I want live data, and I don't want it flattened. Uh, now, what does that mean for all this here, though? That means that I need to turn my gain down a little, right? There we go. Um, all right. That looks good. Okay, so I can, I have three different uh, ways that I can go ahead and generate my call. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say I want to call CQ under number two. That's the one I pretty much stay under. And, oh, very important. Got a tune. All right, so what did I remind us to do? Well, what we need to do is we need to take a look at our Yesu configuration. So let's go ahead and tune again. And oh my goodness, we're really hot, aren't we? Uh, now where can we change that though? Uh, well, hmm, let's see. I There's a couple different ways I can do this. Now I'm already configured at the right level here on one program. Why would I want to change the level on the radio, right? What could I do? Well, let's see. Uh, I got a great idea. I am going to... Let me see if I can do this first. One second. I'm going to shrink this down. Oh, no, I grabbed it. Let me try to shrink it down in real time. Come on. There we go. I'm going to shrink this down so I can see the meter. I keep moving stuff. Sorry, guys. Come on. There we go. All right. And over on the right here, over on the right here, I have a, uh, uh, a power setting. So let me go ahead and select tune again. And I'll watch the meter and I'll start cranking my power down, right? Move it up a little. I like it right there. That's, uh, that's pretty good. So we'll undo tune. All right. Sorry about that rough edit there. Um, I'm not really used to using uh, this screen capture software yet. I'm still working with it. All right. So next step, uh, let's go ahead and call CQ. So I do that by selecting CQ and enable. Nothing happened. Why not? Well, we're waiting for the odd sequence. There we go. So I'm calling CQ. It's that simple. Anyway, with all that said, it's only going to transmit for 13 seconds. Uh, if I want to hold it, I can just say hold uh, TX. But the important thing to remember here is it's that easy to set up. Uh, I will, uh, when you know what, I'll tell you what, when I'm showing uh, the uh, uh, FL Digi uh, in QSOs, I'll try to show uh, this as well in a QSO. Matter of fact, this would probably be easier to show in a QSO. All right, so that's it. My goodness, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I sure enjoyed putting it together for you. Have yourself a great day, and thanks again. We'll talk to you soon. Well, there you go, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that video on FL Digi and Hey, I'm kind of glad I had the opportunity to sneak in some uh, WSJT setup for you as well. I know that it's really, really difficult to get this to interface with your radio for some radios. And uh, I encourage you uh, to look online and look for people that are basically doing it with 
your radio. Uh, if you got an FT991 or really any of the later model like the uh, FTDX3000, 1200, um, all the things that I talked about are pretty much the same. All right. So for now, 73 from Stu, AG6AG. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you soon.